Hey folks, welcome back to another video. Today I want to show you this new um, DAW or application that, that was just released yesterday evening. And it's in the works for 10 years by one developer and it's completely free. Of course, you can pay something or donate something to him if you want. Um, and I drop you the link down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. It works on all platforms and it's a kind of a modular environment, but there are some yeah, some things you have to know before you start dive into it. So I am I was playing around yesterday evening. I tried to get something done and I did this here um, uh, 10 minutes ago. And it's not a modular environment in a traditional sense. So there are some differences here. But one, all these signals as you can see here floating around are typed. It's not like a UREC system or the grid or anything else where you can just put any signal into any input check and you get something out of it. These signals are typed. For instance, this uh, brown brownish line here is basically a node signal and the node signal transports pitch and gate information at the same time. It's not like only pitch or only gate, it's gate and pitch at the same time. So it's like a MIDI signal or a, yeah, just a node signal, node on, node off, and so on. And then you have these pulled signals here, which are basically gate signals. And there are some, this is where basically it starts to get um, hard for me to wrap my head around because the developer said himself that he never actually used um, in, in kind of a modular system. So this is more like an imagination of him, how so how a modular system could work. So um, if you are familiar with Eurorack or with the grid or with uh, any other modular system, this works completely different in my opinion. Also, some of the naming, some of the modules are very different. So for instance, we have your signal generator, as you can see here, uh, we can we can actually zoom in here with the mouse. Um, this signal generator is at its heart or at its core, it's an oscillator, but it's named signal generator. You can change here also the, the waveform of this oscillator. You have pulse width, um, you can change the frequency here. And when you input here a note signal coming from this, this note sequencer here, you trigger the frequency to the right frequency of the node, of course, and you can al you also get basically the envelope. You don't need to use an envelope here with the gain and then um, modulate the amp basically. So in a UREC world, it, this would be an, an uh, VCA and this is an envelope here triggering, triggering the VCA. You don't need this because the node sequencer delivers node and pitch at the same time, triggers the signal generator and outputs here a node. Um, so that's that. Then we have here the pulsar, like I said, the pulsar is basically a gate generator or a clock signal, and it can trigger only um, devices that or modules that have an pulse input like this one as you can see on top it's yellow yellow you can we can use this um yeah this input here um sometimes you can also input um things into as you can see this doesn't work here i can probably put this into volume here no it doesn't work so you can't connect certain uh, combinations here you have to find this out or read the manual or the documentation what kind of signal you can put into what kind of input check. Um, so this is a bit different. Um, then we have also the naming things, like I said, you have the pulsar, which is simply spoken just a gate or a clock signal generator. And we have something like the signal generator, which is an oscillator. And then we have the oscillator, which is a signal generator here at the, at the front. And I think there is here an envelope integrated and the filter, which is basically a synth. So it's not like an oscillator, it's a synth. This is an oscillator, in my opinion. And this is already a synth, which is strangely also organized here under the synth category. And it's not an oscillator. 
So this is a bit some, sometimes confusing. And this is uh, throughout the whole um, thing here, the whole DA, where you have these names and they, they're actually not correct in my opinion. So it's, it's a bit confusing if you're coming. It, it's not wrong, it's just confusing when you are coming from a traditional modular synthesizer. But then you have concepts like where you don't have a connection. This note sequencer is putting out notes, but you can also change the scale in here and there's no connection between these two. But this one here changes the scale for all note sequencers in this, uh, in this current project. So you can change here completely the scale and change everything basically. Okay, so this is something you have to keep in mind. Um, then there's this concept of LFOs here. LFOs are actually, let's delete this, are not separated modules, I think. You, can, you can't input them here just like normal, um, normal modules. Um, so on the mod modulators here, I think there's no... You can't find an LFO. Maybe there is one with a different name, but I haven't found it yet. Um, but instead here, you right click a parameter. And you get this, you get this overlay here. And this gives you basically an LFO modulating here the low. Let's, let's select here the, the low part, maybe here and the high part. So we want to modulate between these two uh, parameters here. And then you can pin this down and you get a separate module now. And there you have it. You can do this with all kinds of um, things here. I can also modulate your modu modulators, which is, which is nice. So you get that. So this is also something you have to keep in mind um, with the LFOs. And yeah, there are also no traditional things like in the UREC work, there is no uh, sample and hold, for instance. This this was something I was searching yesterday. And I wrote him on, on his Discord, so you can check out his Discord. I wrote him this here, congrats to the release, looks interesting so far, is there actually some kind of sample and hold module holding a pitch while gate is high? I'm struggling a bit with the abstraction level of the modules, that's what I wrote him yesterday. And he wrote back, I'm not sure, I, I know exactly what you're asking for, ironically I don't have much of a hands-on background in physical modular since. So the developer never used something like Eurorack or um, the grid before, so you have to keep this in mind that it's complete, completely different or, in a, uh, you know, the mindset of, is different uh, from, from the developer, so you keep, have to keep this in mind. It's not bad, it's just like, you know, it's different. One potential answer, you could use a node sequencer module and a patch and patch a pulsar module into it to drive it and then you enable disable the pulsar. And I did this here with the cord holder. It kind of works in, in but not really like I wanted to have, like, you know, I want to have straight only pitch from the node sequencer. And then I use a different signal, which is the pulsar here, which gives me a different rhythm. And then I get the current pitch here from the node sequencer, hold it and play it as long as the pulse signal is. But th this is not how it works because the node signal is gate and pitch at the same time. So it, it doesn't make sense here. Um, as you can see, I don't need the pulsar at all. Then you have also here in the coupler strong thing, you have a volume knob, so there's also amp included into this, which is basically just a synth here. Also something which is nice is that you have also VST support here. I'm also, I made a um, special folder on my hard drive 
only to put there the VST from Valhalla Supermassive in there because I have so many VSTs in my VST folder and the scanning basically um, yeah, crashed the whole app. So I made a special folder with just the Valhalla Supermassive in it and scanned only this directory to have it here in, in this application available. So yeah, maybe this is interesting for you to try out because it's completely free. Um, it's it's fun to play with at least. Um, it's a bit rough around the edges, like I said, um, inter interface wise, and sometimes it crashes, but it's not a big problem, I think. Um, and some of the concepts are not like like you're used to when you are coming from the Eurorack world or when you're coming from the grid. Um, it's a bit different, yeah, it's, it's a learning curve and you have to find out what some of these um, modules are doing. And some of them are very high level concepts. Um, for instance, here also the drum synth was something. Um, let's see, we have here... Under instruments, you don't find synths, it's like you find sequencers, so it's also a namely, uh, strangely named. Um, we see no synths. We have a drum player here. Uh, that's not what I want. Um, drum synth, yeah. So the drum synth is 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 basically signal generators, eight eight signal generators, and each signal generator has um, an envelope and a filter. It's also a combination of these low-level modules here, in a kind of way. So you have like low level concepts in here and also high level devices that combine some of these low level concepts into one device. And there are so many of them here. You have to learn or have to look up what each of these modules are doing. It's not like in the grid where you have like small modules that do just one or two things and then you combine it to much larger devices. You have small devices that you can't combine sometimes and you have to then you have to use higher level modules or higher level concept modules to do actually what you want to do. So this is a bit, um, yeah, you have to, to learn it basically or you have to find your way around it. But nonetheless, it's, it's a fun thing. It works for me very well. It sounds also good and I think I really like this one here. I want to see in the grid of Bitwig Studio to have something like this where you can see how the signal flows and what kind of signal you have. As you can also you can see here um, when you change this here for square wave you can see the line also becomes a square wave or saw which is neat. It's not really needed but it's a, it's a small little addition which think which I think um, enhances the experience pretty much pretty nice um so yeah i think i'm playing around with this today this came out yesterday i want to show you that it's on the market uh give you a small little tour there's also uh, a nice video on the on youtube which i link you on the description or maybe you go on the home homepage. there's also the, the video to it from the developer showing you how all all of this all of this works and um, yeah, have fun with it. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I want to encourage you to go to the webpage, download the application, try it out, and maybe leave a small donation to the developer because it's actually a hard work to get something like this off the ground. And he developed this over the course of 10 years, so he probably invested a lot of time and sweat into this. So um, yeah, just do it donate something, download the application, have some fun. And yeah, wrote me in the comments how you like it. And uh, if you have problems at all, or if you found it pretty easy to use, let me know. Also, um, leave me a thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.